The stock market is largely controlled by the actions of the Federal Reserve. I have discussed this in detail, in length, in previous videos and in my book. Today we're going to talk about the stock market's wild volatility and how the Fed is going to have to keep interest rates low if they want the stock market to continue to increase. Of course, the result of this is going to mean more displaced money and that is the money that of course they are printing up. They are forcing the average citizen to get their money out of so safer investments like a bank and they're going to put their money into the stock market and other more riskier assets. So let's get into some information today. This is the big up and down moves of the S&P 500 over the past couple of days. First, I did a video about how the stock market was going down. Then I did a video about how it was going up. And here we are, it's going down again. And at the time of the posting of this video, who knows where it might be. The fact remains is that the market is undoubtedly waiting, always waiting for what the Federal Reserve has to say. And that means more volatility. And that also means that there's less reality in this financial market. Because you're supposed to be looking at supply and demand factors. You're supposed to be looking at the health of an economy. You're supposed to be looking 5, 10, 20 years down the road and saying, is this a strong economy? Should I put my money in? And of course, the uh, investment uh, companies would do the same, except now all that matters is what the Federal Reserve is going to say. And this has been the case particularly since the financial crisis and even beforehand, but it has been undoubtedly since the financial crisis, everything weighs down upon the Federal Reserve and their actions. And I'll get to the Federal Reserve in a moment. Let's go into this. Stimulus bets send S&P to biggest about face since 2011. That was a few years back, so this is quite a big uh, difference here. This is out of Bloomberg, talking about investors weighing the prospect of slower economic growth overseas against the benefit of U.S. interest rates staying near zero. So they're trying to say, you know, where is the risk? Where is the volatility? Where should I put my money? And of course, it's all about derivatives, credit default swaps, and asset-backed securities. Nothing anymore is of real value. This is what I want to get through to people, and of course, the other other individuals in the main in the alternative news forget about the mainstream media that's just uh, long gone but even in the alternative news to realize that the market is fundamentally fictional at this point there is a substantial fiction that has been created by what the federal reserve does that's what you need to see. You need to realize that no longer are we looking at the economic fundamentals, things that I talk about in my book, the basics, you know, your PE ratios, you know, the market capitalization of stocks. These things really don't matter anymore when you have a central bank and central banks all over the world printing up money out of thin air, receiving incentives to buy up the stock market. You have high frequency trading and you look, I mean, I've covered it before. You've seen it, how these stock market can move up and down a thousand times in a second all because of computer algorithms there's no reality left so when they talk about this investors weighing in on the prospect it's all about computer programming it's all fictional i'm not willing to read this and have a serious conversation about it it's not real anymore this is the global imbalances bigger now than the pre-crisis. And that's exactly what's happening. You can see this going on, particularly in Europe. You can see how some countries in Europe are doing much better than others. That's for sure because they're forced on a single interest rate, a single currency, and it cannot be sustained. And then you look at other countries around the world like China who have been growing and growing and growing. But now because of what's happening in the world, they're starting to slow down. I covered, I believe it was nine charts over the past few months all showing and pointing to a slowdown in China and that's what happens with globalization the China is uh, generally an exporting nation of course that's changing but generally an exporting nation when they have nobody to export to or at least a reduced amount based on what's happening in those other economies they are gonna hurt as well it's just the way it is that's globalization that's the way it works then you have this this is how I want to connect it here Brooklyn home prices reach a record
record in the third quarter. Again, out of Bloomberg, home prices in Brooklyn jumped to a record in the third quarter, extending a surge that has made New York Borough the only part of the city to surpass the peak in values before the financial crisis. Okay, so you have this area here that is really doing well. The home prices are good. And of course, whenever the mainstream media wants to report on home prices, they're going to use this as one of their statistics. But let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the disparity that is really happening in this U.S., in America. Let's look at this. Half of the New York City is living in near poverty. And this is right here. Despite the rise in employment, and we all know how fictional those numbers are, nearly half of New York City's population is living near poverty levels, and the study revealed that basically 46% of New Yorkers are barely making ends meet. Why is this the case? They suggest that it's basically saying that low wages, rising rents, and a lack of benefits largely to blame. Now, I want to talk about those benefits for just a moment. I wrote about it in my book, saying that the cost of every U.S. government anti-poverty program is increasing to levels far beyond reason. Meanwhile, the U.S. government is already running a budget deficit that is approaching $1.5 trillion every year and the numbers increasing annually. These are statistics. These are facts. These are irrefutable evidence that you need to sit down, you need to think about and realize what is going to happen in the future. It is pretty easy. You don't need to be so intelligent to really understand how this is going to work. You have a country that's too far in debt, but then uh, you would Technically, in, in years prior, you would just have your money in another country. But now, because of globalization, you can look at the markets practically all in sync with each other as of the year 2000. Of course, it's not exactly the way it is, but it does uh, fluctuate, and they do go almost in sync with each other since the year 2000. And this is something that doesn't seem to be changing all because of what is globalization and a big problem. And of course, it has benefits. But of course, right now, it is becoming a big problem. We see that. This is very interesting. Look at what's happening in the world economy. This is all around the world. I'll read you a few of these. Ireland, German, Dutch, Portuguese, French, U.S., Spanish, and Finnish, all of their bonds are selling at near either record lows or near record lows. This is unbelievable to look at and to realize what this means. It means that money is really losing its value, and this is happening rapidly. And it is not just one, two, or three countries. This is happening all around the world. You have to worry about things like bail-ins right now. I wouldn't even think about bailouts now because it is already a foregone conclusion. They are setting up the framework for the bail-ins, and they're going to go for it. They need to recapitalize the banking structure. They're giving no money on their social called assets or instruments. They're going to go to more and more risky things, asset-backed securities, collateralized debt obligations, CDO squared, CDO cubed. You've seen it all. I've talked about it in my book as well. This is unbelievable to, to really look at, to see where they're going with this. It's going to get more and more dangerous, more and more volatility. That means more and more government interference, and you know where that's headed. Speaking of government interference, check this out. This is brand new to myself. I'm not sure if you've seen this out of the Wall Street Journal, meet Edward Quince, the secret Federal Reserve Chairman in 2008. You can read the article for yourself. Basically, what it talks about is Ben Bernanke was actually Edward Quince, according to the emails. They talked about this regarding the AIG bailout. They wanted everything to remain secret, so he used a fake name, Edward Quince, during that time. And the reason I mention this is not necessarily that he was using a fake name, is to tell you that what goes on behind these closed doors is something that we may never know. The system itself is created in such a way that you as the individual will not be able to prosper, and especially in the future, it's heading worse and worse because of the government structure it allows these mega corporations to take over and control every everything that is that we do that we have supposed to have power over that's what i wanted to mention it's pretty obvious to me i hope it is to you as 
Well, if you found this informative, please give me a thumbs up. It signals to me that you like this information. Also signals to the other YouTubers that this is a good video. Helps me out a lot. I really appreciate that. And of course, don't forget to become an insider. The Insiders is where I give out all my best intel for free, and that's available at themoneygps.com. You scroll down to the bottom, fill in your email address, and you get occasional emails from me.